Many people know about mandrakes from a certain story about a young wizard named Harry. In the story, the children are instructed to pull out a potted plant from a pot, and in so doing, reveal a human-looking root, whose screams can kill a person. In reality, the mandrake is an actual plant. Its scientific name is Mandragora autumnalis. It grows throughout the Mediterranean basin, and it is mentioned twice in the Bible as the Hebrew Dudaim. The plant produces a very strong, fragrant fruit, which is referenced in the verse from the Biblical Song of Songs. With its anthropomorphic root, it was said that there were male and female types of the plant, although this is not scientific. Dudaim are translated as Mandragora in the Greek Septuagint, as well as in the later Latin Vulgate. In Aramaic, it is called Yabruha, which is the name it was referred to as in the Targum of Ankylos, Midrashim, and the Talmud. Mandrakes are still referred to by this name in Arabic, preserving the ancient identification of the plant. According to the biblical story, we are told that Reuben went out during the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes and brought them to his mother Leah. Parenthetically speaking, he must have really known what he was looking for as the mandrake blooms in the winter whereas the wheat in the Middle East is harvested in the late spring early summer. When Leah's sister Rachel, who had not yet had children, saw that she had received mandrakes, she requested that Leah give her some. It seems from the aforementioned story that Rachel was seeking the Dudaim as a type of fertility treatment. Indeed, in traditional medicine, mandrakes were used for all kinds of remedies, curing infertility being but one. People would sleep with them under their pillows. The plant is poisonous, containing solanum alkanoids, which can produce vomiting, dysentery, and even death. That being said, a more moderate consumption can produce hallucinogenic and hypnotic effects. Throughout history, it has been used as an anesthetic, as well as to treat depression, mania, and convulsions. Because of its rarity and value, many superstitions became to be associated with the harvesting of the mandrake. Many people tried to replicate it. People also tried to pass other plants, other roots, as mandrakes, even going as far as to carve human-shaped roots and putting hair and beards on their quote-unquote mandrakes. It was said that a demon lived in the root, and anybody who would try to harvest it would be killed. These tall tales were used to deter people who apparently took much more stock in legends and old wives tales than we do today. J.K. Rowling's version of a screaming mandrake is a later elaboration of an idea which is found in none other than the works of Josephus Flavius, the Jewish historian. He believed that the root could be used to cure someone possessed by demons. However, he writes that to pick the plant could be a deadly exercise. Josephus therefore writes the following how-to in order to harvest a mandrake to protect oneself from certain death. And I quote, A furrow must be dug around the root until its lower part is exposed. Then a dog is tied to the root after which the person who tied the dog must run away. The dog will then chase after him, which pulls out the root, but the dog dies suddenly instead of his master. After the dog has been killed, the root can be handled without fear. This advice persisted until medieval times, and unfortunately for the mandrake, it stayed associated with black magic and superstition until modernity. The rabbis of the Babylonian Talmud don't delve into the dark side of the mandrake, but instead pose the question as to why such a seemingly frivolous piece of information was included within the Torah. The answer, according to them, is to teach us virtue. The righteous do not engage in theft, even when it comes to the most insignificant of items. It was a common practice in ancient times during the wheat harvest to go and pluck some grain from a field as one was passing. Ruvain, however, did not do this. Instead, he forged for something that was ownerless to bring home. Also in modern times, at least in the state of Israel, mandrakes cannot be picked. Not due to demonic spirits, 
but rather an effort to preserve the fragile and unique natural beauty found here. Thanks for watching. If you got benefit out of that, please make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you really want to support the channel, consider donating to my Patreon. But while I have you here, check out these interesting videos on other topics. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.